what's going on, y'all? I'm Chris Facey, the assistant pastor at the Passion for Christ movement, and with me today is Niasha Braylock, who is the CEO of the P4CM clothing line. And we have an extremely distinguished guest with us today, and he is Molly Music. Our church was very into any music that glorifies God, biblically based, and just puts Christ just exalts him, we listen to it. And so my pastor was like, have you heard of Molly Music? And I'm like, who's Molly Music? And then other people in the fellowship were like, <laughs> were like, who's Molly Music? And I'm like, they're like, just go to iTunes, get his album. Yeah. And I played it and I was like, I cannot believe this because so often in the Christian community, our talent level is not one of excellence that matches what the world puts into it. But this album, just had such a diversity, like your lyricism. I can listen to this thing from start to finish. You're killing me, man. And I was like, it's, it's mad edifying. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so I'm like, who is this dude? Can you let us know, like, who are you, <laughs> one, and what brought you to that place? Oh, man. Um, I definitely, I believe that it's a situation to where I was held back. Like, I was, uh, I was covered. Like, um, that whole... David, you know what I mean, in the field with the sheep type mm -hmm. thing. Um, and the root of my desire for making music wasn't to let people hear it. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it is very, very satisfying. Like I, I got very, very irritated with what was on the radio, yeah. what represented God, yeah. or whatever. And I just know what I wanted to hear. Yeah. And then at that time, that's when it was real cool to be like, it ain't cool to listen to this person. I don't mm -hmm. listen to this. Mm -hmm. So I literally created what I wanted to hear. How did you hear about the Passion for Christ movement? Man, who, who hasn't? You know, like, um, I was rocking with Ty, of course, you know, in the whole Philly area, and everybody was rocking the X shirts. I'm like, you know, what? Yeah, you know, who's this? Yeah. And uh, we had a big show in New York, and the truth, his whole camp, He's like all his background singers and everybody yeah. had him on, so that, that's when it was just popping from there. Got it. And what you think about him when you first saw him? Like, like I thought, background? I thought it was dope. It was very, very strong, mm -hmm. you know, and it definitely uh, captured. And I thought it was a huge like ministry to somebody to even question and for you to give a testimony. Yeah. What is your testimony? Like, what made you choose X Doubter, and what has made you be so passionate for Christ? It's amazing, man. I'm glad. I'm just, this is exciting. I, I love this. Um, for a long time, I was serving and worshiping and trying to fall in love with an image or a direction or an area or an idea, like a, a concept or idea of something huge that dictates and does. I, I never understood it. And, um, and I guess I'm a bit of an intellectual, so I want to know. But for a long time, I, I worshipped and like gave was trying to give my life to my parents' God or my my pastor's God and, yeah. and all this stuff. And even though it's the same God, He still is for me. Yeah. So I, I I felt that He was way too holy to be personalized towards me. Yeah. So I thought that when everybody was speaking, they were speaking of the same God. But I never recognized how you know everybody's situation was different. So um, after that, after being frustrated without really trying to receive a personal guide, yeah. I didn't I didn't think it was real. Yeah. But I knew that um, the benefits or whatever, so whatever, it works for my mom's prayers and everybody else's mm -hmm. prayers, and I'm in the house. So, you know, I guess I'll just be covered, but I'll continue to play. So I was listening to all this stuff, and, and I doubted. Like, I thought God was just was just this monster mm -hmm. of a man, of, of a deity, like, with wrath and, and fire and killing and and judgment like yeah. man yeah. so like um and then like as i would take the steps like once i finally found out that christ came and kind of did that so like i'm reading the old testament like man I'm, you know i'm glad i didn't serve this god or whatever like so like all this confusion like just trying to figure it out and i never put love in there mm -hmm. but um so it, it just caused caused me to doubt so like you get prophecies when you're young you're going to be you know all this and then it's seven years later and you got um all these situations 
it, it was so it just caused me to doubt. I didn't believe any of it. I didn't yeah. want to hear it, and, and I was frustrated with it. So. Yeah. What broke it for me? Um, I got so far. Um, I had a full scholarship um, offered to Oklahoma State. I'm an athlete. I love football. I'm like, got it. Woo. what position? Running back, baby. I told the <laughs> peel, and I lost all my weight, but I still got my frame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, that that was my life, and um, I, I was going to sign, and I'm a, I just it was I just didn't feel right, you know. So I go to my dad. I'm like. Oh, this is shaking me, you know, whatever. My dad, like, you know, it's all right. You know, we all get, you know, who doesn't want their son to play football? Um, long story short, I made that decision, and I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to follow you. So I, I tell my coach, and he jacks me up on the wall. He's like, what is wrong with you, Pollard? You know, you, you're going to, all this God-given talent and gift and, and all this stuff, and you're going to waste it to make rap beats? I mean, he's going in. I'm like, I don't, I don't know, you know, I just, yeah. I just felt something. I just, like... It's something that's gonna happen with this. Yeah. And for a long time, I felt like I was the only one that had to uh, believe it. But the moment I said yes, for like a, a span of about a year and a half, I, w I didn't feel embraced by God for choosing. So I, I was looking for a reward for my choice. Like, I put a lot down for you, God. Yeah. I'm like, I put a lot down. Like, I'm looking for it and everything yeah. just got worse. I would pray and couldn't feel his presence, you know what I'm saying? I'll be in church and would like be jealous of the, the God that everybody else could feel that had them waving their hands and crying. Yeah. And I'm like, does he? I, I know I heard, I know what I heard. Am I dumb? Yeah. You know, do I need to go back? Like, it, it was bad. So I, I got so frustrated and I started indulging in everything that I didn't do coming up, trying mm -hmm. to believe in God. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was sick and it was a wake up call when I had a sign. I was shook. I was sat down in ministry. Mm -hmm. I was a huge embarrassment to my, my family and my church family. Yeah. Um, I was always I was the I was the little boy, you know yeah. that that's that little boy that be singing. It was bad, man. Like, and then he didn't even go to college and, and all this stuff, and it was bad, brother. Mm -hmm. Woo! I, I lost a lot, yeah. and it was a lot of people who were like, I knew it, you know, I knew mm -hmm. it. It was so. Um, it, it was really. But my family, like God, came into my family, and like my my father, man, he. It was it was crazy. Of course, the pain was there. Yeah. With my mom and my dad, even with my sisters and my pastor, everybody. I don't even want to go back to that. But it was a molding time. Yes. And as he grew, actually, God just gave me myself, and the fact that he didn't think about my son Cameron doesn't think about food. He didn't think about clothes. He didn't do nothing but exist. Mm. And he didn't have to want anything. All provision was just there. Yeah. So like, and the fact that it didn't take anything to me, it was actually my responsibility, like a need, a necessity to me to provide for him. Yeah. And all I had to do was like transpose that, like take the parallel and blow it up times 50 million. Yeah. And I just begin to weep. And like every action that he would do, which is all I could do was see myself in the hands of God. And then I, I got a crazy respect for my father mm -hmm. and like everything that he did. And then I got a crazy respect for my spiritual father. Yeah. And then my mind just broke open only because I gave birth to love and it forced me to do it. And after doing it, I was like, whoa, you know, this is a strong, this is a strong thing. Yes. And it, it all doubt was erased, but by love. It wasn't erased by knowledge. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, it, like love conquers all and after falling in love with God I recognize that you know love is tied to your emotion and your affection yeah. and your affection is the only thing in our human makeup and existence that can override logic you can know better you can want to do better but if your affection drive you to do something else it'll override what you know yes so it's the only thing that can override our, the power of our brain which is what I needed since I'm such an intellectual yeah. And it saves my life. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I need everybody to support the Passion for Christ movement. Everybody in X shirts. The scriptures say that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies. And we need everybody's testimony to cover everybody in the planet. Passion is contagious. So once all of us become passionate and on fire about it, the people who aren't passionate become the lames, all right? We need everybody to participate. And I'm going to be looking for the X shirts in every city. And I'm coming. And I'm looking, all right? Go get a shirt at p4cm.com, all right? Let's blow the site up. Let's let everybody see these shirts, all right? I'm a believer.